Hi everybody. Uh, so last couple of days, you have learned a lot of geophysical flows. Okay, and it's like almost your brain is full of all sorts of equations and numbers. Okay, so I don't know how much I can put in your brain right now. So, <laughs> so the topic uh, Andy gave to me is thermal convection, and it's a very nice topic. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> so here is a broad view of thermal convection. So the scales where you can get the thermal convection. So here, inside of any planet or stars, so you have a convective zone. And this is sometimes is above the radiating zone, and sometimes is below the radiating zone, but it occurs. And it has also plays a big role in atmosphere formation of this cell, particularly Hadley cells. And it also play a role in thermohaline circulations, as you can see here, the formation of deep water when you are cooling at North Atlantic. And also, every day when you boil something, so the heat is coming as a radiation, and then heat going to, uh, it increases the temperature of the pot, and then water starts to coming out. So this is the scale is convection is occurring. Now in this lecture, I've mainly talked about like the buoyancy plays a non-restoring force here, okay? So in Andy's lecture or the lecture before, like Ivan's lecture, where buoyancy plays restoring force, but here is buoyancy plays non-restoring force. And then I picked up one classic problem is Raleigh-Bernard convection, and then I look at the stability analysis and few example of onset convection, and then we'll go really beyond uh, this Rayleigh Bernard uh, situation where Rayleigh number is small and two really high critical, so it's really super critical turbulent convections. And then I'll talk about a little bit about some other form of convection. So here is the buoyancy difference which caused this all sorts of geophysical phenomena. It allows gravity waves that you found in Ivan's lecture, and it causes flow, that's convection, and it happens in a lot of scenario that I already told you, and it inhibit the stratified flows. And final, it can lead to turbulence mixing by a vertical mass transport. So what is buoyancy force? It's just like a body force, and it occurs due to density difference when particle, when any object is away from its equilibrium state. So, and then, it will reorganize or rearrange itself to back to its equilibrium form or equilibrium state. It can be stabilizing force or can be destabilizing force. So here I picked up one nice cartoon, say. So say this is a background condition, okay. It can be stable and it can be unstable. So this is I'm giving a background density profile. And as you know that in Ivan's case, if you pull this particle up, you can write it's nice way to equate the motion. So this is the acceleration term, and this is your the force which tells you where it particle go. And the simple way you can formulate this one later, and you will get a nice relation with n square. So that means this is this position. So and this n square is you, you already heard about in a couple of large lectures. This is buoyancy frequency. And now, what is the solution of this equation? This is two second order uh, equation. Is e to the power minus i n t and e to the power minus e to the power plus i n t and e to the power plus uh, minus i n t. So now, here the particle will oscillate or it can. Uh, it will oscillate or it will damping or it will go beyond or it will uh, means like it will away from the equilibrium that decide particularly the sign of n square. Okay, so now for this particular regime, the n square is positive. So you have kind of oscillatory motion, just like a simple pendulum, you just oscillate. But now suddenly this one you change to unstable condition. What will happen? 
now your n square is negative. So if n square is negative, then n is complex number. As you plug n is complex number here, this determinant will grow in time. So that means from there we can see now is buoyancy play not a non not a restoring force. It's non restoring force. <coughs> and to describe this problem, we have to come up with some non-dimensional number for particular thermal convection, or sometimes we call it as a natural convection. And this is a new number you learn today is Rayleigh number. So far, you have learned Rossby number, which is importance when you're looking flow in much more bigger scale. Then is Reynolds number uh, that Graham is introduced when you have a velocity uh, imposed in the system. But here, we are imposing temperature difference. So this is a new number you will get. And to get this new number, you first have to look the Navier-Stokes equation, and you have to non-dimensionalize this Navier-Stokes equation. So before going this non-dimensionalization, we have to assume the most important approximation is Bushnell's approximation. I'm not going to this one, so I put these slides for further reference. So the basic property of Bushnell's approximation, any fluctuating density should sit on the gravity rather than any part of this equation. Now, what is scale we have here? We don't have any velocity scale for natural convection. So we have to get some velocity scale for the natural convection. So for length scale, we can assume some length where you impose this temperature difference. And velocity, we don't have any scale. So we have to get the velocity scale. And now, in the Evans lecture, the density is playing restoring force. And in Andy's lecture, again, density plays restoring, fo uh, restoring force. And there is a shear. It's a non-restoring force. So there is always like balance. Like one is stabilizing the motion, another is destabilizing the motion. For in the natural, for in the natural convection, where is that restoring force? So that's the reason we have to keep this viscous term in the system. That play the restoring force in the motion. So now, from there, if you if you have a viscosity or diffusivity, you can get a velocity scale. And we choose the velocity scale as kappa by L. And if you have this velocity scale, you can get a time scale that is L square by kappa. Now, if you substitute all this scale in this navier stokes equation under Bushnell's form, you get two important numbers. One is, that's the important, is the Rayleigh number, and as well as Prandtl number. So here is that magic number which play a big role in natural convection. So now, I will give much more physical idea of a much more physical intuition of this Rayleigh number in later slides. But let's assume they like this form, where so this is kind of you have some buoyancy force, and in the bottom you can imagine this is like a viscous force, and it's formula formulated as gravity alpha is thermal expansion coefficient and delta t, where you are giving the temperature difference which causing the flow and this length scale the where you are maintaining this temperature difference and this nu and kappa so it's nu is molecular viscosity and kappa is thermal diffusivity and then another is Prandtl number so if you look at this expression so so this reynolds number play a big role here that give you this pressure as well as this buoyancy term as equal magnitude. So what it can give? So if you have a much more Rayleigh number, what will happen? It can immediately give you pressure difference, and that can drive the flow. So, so this is the first time you can observe that this is, this is a huge number is sitting in the uh, density term that that 
in a A that magnify these density terms. And now, similar way, we can pick up heat equation and non dimensions this heat equation. We observe that each and every term in this heat equation is, is important. There is no Rayleigh number and Prandtl number is involved in the heat equation. Now, back to the most classical form of this convection. So as you know, there's a two more classical form of convection is Rayleigh Bernard convections, where we impose cold, we impose a heating from the heating from the bottom and cold from the top. You maintain that temperature. And there's another form of convection is Rayleigh Taylor convection. That is the most common convection you will find anywhere is like even in the breaking of internal waves or uh, even in um, in many scenario you can come up with this type of convection not particularly for Rayleigh Bernard convection so in the Rayleigh Taylor convection what happened when it's cold fluid is just top of the hot fluid so any time of convection case like thermally driven so in the thermally driven, that means we are, there is no, there is no velocity we are imposing in the flow. So this is just a thermal forces. So what happened in the thermal forces, we are always giving potential energy to the system. And that potential energy will be converted to kinetic energy and that's why you get this motion. Now I'm showing first case is rally. Taylor instability. This is your cold fluid at the top and hot fluid at the bottom. And this is the interface. And you lead a little bit disturbance at the interface, and you'll get that instability. You can see here, this hot fluid has more buoy less buoyant. So they always go up. And the same similar way, this cold fluid is more buoyant. They are going down. So there is always an upward and downward motion. Now, if you want to, if you zoom one of these plume, so you can see that more complex thing is happening there. So I'm just zooming one of this plume is going up. And now you, can, you have really high resolution. You can see that this is not only the convective instability is happening, like form of a mushroom structure. Inside or head of this mushroom structure, there's a lot of cage instability is occurring. Because previously, we don't have any velocity. When this plume is start going upward, it getting that huge velocity. So that means the velocity here, uh, you have a strong shear across this interface, and that will cause the shear instability. So here, all the instability at the end, you'll find like there's a mixture of convective and shear instability. So, so that is the, uh, what is called, last destination of any instability. It's like after that, you can't separate any of the instability. So, here, this shear is kind of like a secondary instability. So same thing, uh, when you zoom one of the Andes, uh, the KH instability, you will see that there is a secondary instability. But you need to have a really high resolution to see this uh, secondary instability. That's secondary instability, always like three dimensional. So here, you can see this is like almost like two dimensional. But when it's breaking of this KH rolls, it need to be a three dimensional instability. So here, I just demonstrated uh, Rayleigh Taylor. Now is Rayleigh Bernard. So what I'm doing here, so I'm imposing 
cold temperature at the bottom and hot temperature at the top. And the top upper panel, I'm showing vertical velocity, and the bottom panel, I'm showing temperature. So you can see like how rigorous the convection is. And particularly, this is like not, you often see those nice Bernard structures because this is this really high Rayleigh number okay, that I will talk about in end of my lectures. And this convection is so multi, with this, at this Rayleigh number, it's like a turbulent convection. You, have, you can see that so many scales are there. So it's like almost like multi-scale. So this is kind of a turbulent, uh, this is a, like one, uh, one example of like turbulent phenomena. Okay, now back to here. So do you think like if you give any instable, uh, sorry, unstable background density gradient, you expect the convection to occur? Not really, because I told you that the viscosity is now restoring force. So there is a competition between buoyancy and viscous forces. So here is this, our nice, much more, much, sorry, most clean picture of uh, convection. So if you look at here, there's a two surface. One surface we are putting constant uh, heat, I uh, constant cool, uh, constant temperature, which is colder than the bottom surface. And background is unstable density gradient. So this is idealized form for Rayleigh Bernard convection. And now, what happens if you perturb the system? So it's fine, I, I can plot like the temperature. So this is higher temperature, this is lower temperature. And this is corresponding density. So now I'm perturbing at any layer. Say for I'm perturbing here. So what will happen? I give you nice, um, the cartoon where if you part up a fluid parcel from this to here, what will happen? It can go away from equilibrium. But there I didn't consider any viscous forces. Now, in real fluid, there is a viscosity is there. So you can, can't avoid this one. So what will happen when the particle will try to go up or down away from its equilibrium state? the viscosity or thermal diffusivity will smooth out this shape. So what will happen? It will again try to back to its equilibrium state. So, so viscosity will stretch out any type of elongation. So that means that should be a number which play this, which will govern that the convection will grow or it will die down. <coughs> so here is this cartoon I just explained here. But if you keep on increasing your buoyancy forces, there is some scenario, you can't stop them to stretch out, it has to go. And then convection will occur. And that is that that magic number, Rayleigh number. So how do you get this Rayleigh number? So most, I got this Rayleigh number from non-dimensional is the Navier's equation, but physically, what is the meaning of physical? So this is this buoyancy force and this is your viscous force. Now, you know in the momentum equation, if you calculate the buoyancy forces as well as the viscous drag, you can get a scaling for any vertical motion from its equilibrium state. 
and you get that that velocity scale and now you can get another velocity scale based on your diffusion of momentum oh. and that is is kappa by h and now so if you compare these two velocities top and bottom you can get rally number so that means there is a competition of force which pulling the fluid parcel away from this equilibrium due to buoyancy and there is always there is a viscous force will pulling this particle back to its equilibrium and there is another nice definition of rally number you can think about these are all the velocity scale based on the gravity that means alpha delta t g and h square root of and this you have seen in the grams lecture also and there is two velocity scale you can get one is diffusion of the momentum so is new involved and diffusion of thermal and if you divide then you can see you get rally number so here we involve both diff both viscous mo a momentum diffusion and thermal diffusion now when you should get any instability there should be a critical rally number and i am going to derive this a linear stability analysis for this particular this configuration and we came out uh, we'll get something like this numbers are 10 to the power 3 order so there will be a lot of math involved here but i am not going to do all those derivations but for your uh, for you i just put all these notes in the in the notes uh, in online so you can go through and maybe you can derive yourself so here is the base state where you are pulling where you giving t1 as a cold temperature and t2 as hot temperature in the bottom and this is at the top and there is a unstable density gradient so this base state is state of no motion and i introduce a beta term that will give you the slope of this temperature gradient now you know when you do any stability analysis usually look for any perturbation will grow in time or not so similar way as ivan did and also andy did so we have to choose the velocity as a combination of base state and fluctuating state so this is the base state and this is a fluctuating state but most in, most important here is that in the base state for this natural convection because as i'm saying this natural convection so there is another num, n, thing maybe you can think out think about is force convection where you have a velocity field but in all this problem we have a natural convection you don't have any prior velocity field in the background so all this has perturbation from the base state and if you plug this in the actual navier-stokes equations under busnes approximation you will get continuity momentum and this is thermal equation now we know we already have a length scale velocity scale and time scale so we can rewrite this navier-stokes equation in terms of those non dimensional parameter and again those important numbers are back Reynolds number and Prandtl number. Now, don't be scared. Just looking at this phase. Okay, what we have to do here, all stability analysis, we have to come up with expression for one quantity. And why this equation for natural convection is so scary? Because we have, we 
we didn't neglect the viscosity term. So as we have a viscosity term <laughs> sitting here, so when you are eliminating each and every term, you will start getting more and more derivatives. And finally, if you do double curl of the momentum equation, you will get something like this. And this equation for particle velocity, and this is really ugly looking than that Ivan has. Because here you can see this, that four, fourth order derivative with respect to space for W. So for, if you neglect the viscosity, you can remove this term. Now this equation is much more nicer, and you can, in a much more nice way, you can solve this equation. But say for, we can't neglect this viscosity, because that is the restoring force here. So now, this is our equation. And now I'm trying to simplify this equation more. If you look at this one, I'm bringing all this term from here to that side. We have that ugly looking equation. And then similarly, you can get equation from the, sim sim similarly, you can get an N1 equation from, from heat equation. And if you look at here, this both equation, there's a two equation and there's a two unknown. One is W, one is theta. So you can immediately remove one of these term. And if you remove, it's more ugly. Look at, it's sixth order. So who wants to solve this equation? Sixth order. Good, somebody already did in how many years back? <laughs> Uh, 60 years back, and got this magic Rayleigh number, like what is called critical Rayleigh number. If you have, if you have less than, if any of your system has that less, that critical Rayleigh number, you never expect any convection. That's kind of really magic number. Okay, now this is sixth order equation. So how many boundary condition do you require? Anybody? How many? For second order equation, how many boundary conditions do you require? Just speak up. I can hear something like <laughs> something four, six. How many? Six. So this is a really hard problem here. Like we have to create some boundary condition here. Okay, so most easier choice is like, when you think, okay, so the top layer and the bottom, so the bottom plate and the top plate, there is no penetration. That vertical velocity cannot go from top and bottom. Okay, that's fine. So that means this, this vertical velocity can be zero at top and bottom. And then, of course, we are imposing temperature condition. So we don't expect any fluctuation at the top and bottom. This is the fluctuating temperature, so it's zero. But that is not enough. How many we have? Just four, so we have to need to more, more. So now, so, so far we haven't used continuity equation. So here is another way you can generate the boundary condition, just using the continuity equation. So, Let's talk about other component of the flow, not the vertical one. So other component of the flow is immediately come your horizontal velocity. So there's two obvious choice. One is the top and bottom surface to be free slip and no slip. So here is one boundary condition, where is you have slip condition. If you have a slip condition, the stresses of any horizontal flow is zero. If stresses of any horizontal flow is zero, using the continuity, you can generate one more boundary condition. Okay. And similar thing happen in the bottom also. And now, say for when is no slip, when is now no slip condition is there. That is the most difficult problem for solve to Raleigh convection. Now 
this is obvious. And from the continuity, if you have no slip condition, you have just vertical stress of vertical velocity is zero. So this is our that ugly looking equation, sixth order equation. And I'm summarizing this boundary condition here. <coughs> this is for rigid and this is free. So why I'm saying rigid is much more difficult to solve and why is free condition is much easier to, to solve. If you look at when you do any, any kind of this normal mode analysis, you usually assume the solution. Okay. Something like sine, cosine. If you just concentrate this one, W is zero, <coughs> and its second derivative is zero. So the obvious choice is the sine. So, so because it's, you if you have a sine curve, it has zero at the top and zero at the bottom. And if you take double derivative of the sine, you will get cosine and then sine. But anybody can tell me that which profile can shoot for this rigid case, which has fast, like W, if W is something and is second derivative, it will give you back to zero. So it's very difficult functions. So I'm just giving, I'm not asking you anything. This is his hyperbolic function. Okay, no more details. And all the normal mode, we usually assume the form of the solution as this is inhomogeneous in the vertical direction because is a boundary is there and there is a gradient is there. So we don't know much about this form. But the other direction is there is no harm to assume wave solution. This x, y direction. And obvious, this is very much obvious, like you plug something this is sigma and t. And we have to look how sigma is evolving. Is it decaying or is it growing or is it just fluctuating, just like internal waves? So, so this is a wave solution and this is this normal mode. And if you plug all everything in this main equation and along with the boundary condition, you can get similar type of dispersion relation and where you can look at the sign of this sigma. This is obvious, if the sigma has either a real or imaginary. If it's imaginary, there's no problem because it's just like a wave, it will oscillate. Because sigma i, an imaginary number and it, it will give you just wave solution. But when sigma is real, then the area of concern. So now, we only look for is there is occurrence of sigma real quantity or not. Okay. So you know that if sigma real is less than zero, that means all mode will decay. And sigma r is greater than zero, that means all mode will growing. So you can imagine kind of there will be a, phase, a space phase where sigma is changing sign from positive to negative. And now we just need to know, we don't have to draw the space space, we just need to know the boundary. So to get the boundary is the obvious choice. Okay, why not sigma real is zero? So we plug this real is zero and from that ugly looking equation, suddenly it gets much so nicer, this one. And with the boundary condition here. And the problem I am solving here is not no slip condition because no slip is much more difficult because you have to have nice function that away from the sine or cosine. So here I'm solving for free slip condition. And that free slip condition very nicely sits on this boundary condition. And I told you, I'm just assuming sign. 
as a structure of vertical mode. And now, I plug this here. Look at so nice expression from that sixth order equation. This is Rayleigh number, and this is the vertical mode, and this is A. I haven't introduced A, but this A is nothing but amplitude of your horizontal wave number. And you, have, you came across this wave number so many times, particularly in Andy's lecture, like which horizontal mode will grow? So here is that wave number. And now, you know that at high Rayleigh number, obviously you have convection because this buoyancy is driven. Low, you don't have any convection. So that means we should go for something much more lower Rayleigh number. So obvious choice, we should choose n to be one. So if you choose n to be one, again, it's so complicated relation, which wave number should grow? Okay, we can optimize this value. And with the optimization, we have now interesting, this critical wave number. But again, this critical wave number is a horizontal wave number. So if this is K and this is L, and before I choose that, there's no harm to choose wave solution in the, in the horizontal plane. So you can choose as LY. And this A is nothing but k square l square and now for top and bottom surface to be free condition you have critical rally number and that is this magic really some magic number is 657.5 and again i told you it's much more difficult problem when you can do rigid at the top and rigid at the bottom that means no slip condition at the top and no slip at the bottom okay you can try but of course, it's all are available. But you can try yourself to test your math, math knowledge. How many differences is required and then you have to optimize and you can nicely get some critical rally number. And for that case, this critical rally number is 1700. So more or less, these numbers are not far apart, not like a order of magnitude apart. There's something like 10 to the power three order. Okay, that's the most take home message. Okay, so now I'm plotting this function. Okay, so I, previously I told you that there should be a regime where flow is stable and flow is unstable. And we only, we are not generating this regime, we are only generating the boundary. So that's the boundary. If flow sits here, is stable. If flow sits here, is unstable. And the most important part, this curve is diverging. So even, so even a really high Rayleigh number, like infinite Rayleigh number, no mode can escape. Has to go to instability. Okay, so this is kind of a summarization because I non-dimensionalize this equation and I non-dimensionalize by the length scale. So that fastest growing mode corresponds to some length scale and that is this length scale is wave number and then I use H to be non-dimensionalized for length scale and then you can get those length scale in terms of is box height and again this is for rigid case and this is for your free slip case okay so in I think two days back or maybe uh, yesterday you guys I've seen this type of structure. So this is called this famous Baynard cell. And really, this theory will not tell you it should go hexagonal, it should go square, or anything. The theory can only tell you 
this one, this length scale. And that means this A, which A will involve. And you know, you can arrange this K and L at different orientation. Okay. So it can give you a different shape, but system will choose much more this type of cell, and even I don't know why. Okay, why they choose this way. But in many cases, like always, system will choose hexagonal structure because it's most compact structure and it's more like stable structure uh, for system to release potential energy and miss like motion of motion of the fluids. So this is picture is valid for both liquid and the gas, but the motion is reverses. So in if you look from the top, this is I'm looking from the top, for the fluid, motion is towards you, and then is going down through these edges. For gas is opposite. But this is a really famous picture, but it not only give you this much more nicer like hexagonal structure, it can give you more structure, like when you boiling of water or boiling of tea. So it will not give you that nice regular hexagon. But obviously, there will be like a dominant scale in the motion, like a single or two, not multi-scale. And this all I'm talking about, the verge of convection. So all are like just above the critical Rayleigh number. And here is some nice pictures from different cases. And all these cases are your Rayleigh number, and is Rayleigh number not bigger than 10 to the minus 3 of your critical Rayleigh number. So this is, is from vegetable oil. This is also vegetable oil for much more, uh, I think, depth. And this is, is similar case, much more higher Rayleigh number. So you see, there is not much scales in the problem, only one, two, or three. So this is not a multi-scale. The movie I showed you before, because convection is rigorous, it's like a turbulent convection. But from looking at here, no, not really. So we have to go to higher Rayleigh number to see the system. So this is a nice computer simulation looking at a flow. And you are looking at from the top or from the bottom. And this is our all the temperature structure. And again, I don't like this because I'm from turbulence background. This is only few scales. It's not like a spectrum, broad brand spectrum. So, and the Rayleigh number is 10 to the 6. So this is this very small Rayleigh number. So, so why I'm interested in the other, other cases? Because other cases, you have really high Rayleigh number. So now I give you kind of taste of what Rayleigh numbers we are sitting here and in space. So Earth, as a good example, as I told you, inside the any planet or star is a convection zone. So that has a Rayleigh number because they have a temperature, fixed temperature on top and bottom, and they have definitely, there is a definite height. So that gives you one Rayleigh number estimation, 10 to the power 8. And look at this number, viscosity is so big. That dropping the Rayleigh number. Okay. And now, when you're looking at the real fluid, means not real fluid, it's water, the viscosity is 10 to the minus 6. So when you're looking a lot of like ocean, ocean case, this Rayleigh number is suddenly rum. Here is this Rayleigh number in the lake, and this is the Rayleigh number, typical Rayleigh number of mixed layer and New Muller Kimber's Rayleigh number. Look at these numbers 10 to the minus 27. And terrestrial convections, like if you go to the bigger planet, not Earth, because Earth's size is smaller, the radius is small. If you increase the radius, because Rayleigh number goes as to the, to the power minus 3, hey, sorry, h to the power 3, so it's like just cube root, hey, cube of the equation, and you can achieve this real number. <coughs> People can only visualize this real number, but really, like based on our labs, based on our, mainly our facilities, and our computational resources, we can, can't achieve this type of real number. We only can observe. Now, and also, we can give some kind of scaling, because scaling is always free, so you can just Look at terms to terms, and then it's like which is not uh, which term is dominated, and you can get a nice scaling. But really, 
in that relay number to like uh, to verify this uh, this scaling is so difficult okay so this scaling is like kind of like hypothetical kind of lower bound upper bound those type of scaling so now what is most important in this natural convection is heat flux how heat flux is varying with the Rayleigh number okay so there is a two school of thoughts here one thing about the boundary is still important all the time because at some high Rayleigh number you will get really strong turbulence in the interior but where you have to con you have to conduct the heat so there should be a viscous sublayer at the bottom where you're transferring the heat so you can't neglect that boundary layer okay so that school of thought is talking about okay so it doesn't depend on the box height and there is a two way you can achieve this scaling like Nusselt number with Rayleigh number by the way I forgot to mention the Nusselt number so Nusselt number is a heat flux in the system and divided by the heat flux due to con conduction. So when is the low Rayleigh number, you can see that there is a no motion. This convection means is heat carried by fluids, like physical motion of the fluid. So when there is a no motion, that means only can happen, it heat can conduct by, not radiation here because it's a medium. So what else is conduction? So that's the conduction here. And this is his convection plus conduction. So that's why when you have Rayleigh number less than critical number, you don't have any convection, convection part. So that means Nusselt number is one. But now we are really away from this critical regime. So you are far, far away. Now, these two schools of thought. One, not dependent on the, the height of the domain. Because that means they don't, don't think about, okay, it's never, it doesn't matter, the heat flux. If you just look at this equation and think is heat flux is independent of height and you know Nusselt number is something power of alpha q h okay don't care that's other other numbers and if this is alpha and you know there's a if I write the Rayleigh number and just write this H, this is H cube. To cancel this H, you have to have alpha one third. Clear? So look at, so nicely you can get a scaling for Nusselt number. And of course, is this heat flux is doesn't depend on the momentum diffusion and it's only thermal diffusion. So that means you have to neglect the new somewhere. So here is the Rayleigh number. Already I proven three, and then we don't know Prandtl number. So say something alpha. And this function is independent of nu. So the obvious choice, one third. Because this expression doesn't have any nu. <coughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, there's another school of thought. Okay, and that is, is nobody knows what is happening. This is, is talking about, this boundary layer is in, unimportant. So that means it's huge, we are far, far away. Some really big Rayleigh numbers, something people are talking about 10 to the power, th uh, uh, 10 to the power 30, uh, above 10 to the power 20. So in that Rayleigh number, this all the boundary is unimportant. That means there's no diffusion and viscous diffusion and momentum diffusion are not important. So it's a similar argument. You can easily show that the Nusselt number is scaling one half. Okay, that is usually called ultimate regime, but nobody knows is it the ultimate regime or not. But scaling, okay, is free. You can see, okay, the scaling is there, and they have some argument. But to prove this argument, we need a data. We don't know. And this is our all existing results. And what suggests existing result based on numerical simulation and experiment? They always suggest, okay, Rayleigh number goes as one three, even not one third. And this is our 
exp uh, numerical explanation recently, we achieved highest Rayleigh number ever in computer simulation. And this is that, which is the point, at the red one, here. And this is the experiment, because experiment you can perform with liquid helium, and you can get really high Rayleigh number. But still, this, this Rayleigh number is not that high that what happening in the outer space. So people are demanding there should be a power of one half. But even, we haven't achieved the power of one third yet. Because one third has to be like straight line. And some numerical simulation, because we have computer, we have resources, so we can do to simulate this problem. Because it's very difficult to build a big tank with really high height to get that conviction. So, but numerically, okay, it's possible. And this is the schematic of numerical simulation, and this is, we are hitting from the bottom. And this is the vis viscosity terms you can calculate. And look at, so nice. Now you start getting this multi-scale, because this Rayleigh number we ramped up, up to 10 to the power 9. And, and here, that is the biggest numerical simulation is done recently with Rayleigh number 10 to the power 13. So how it looks like? Before going to that Rayleigh number, I try to give you Rayleigh number 10 to the power 9. 10 to the power 9 is similar. You have seen those previous slides. It's not much scales, and like almost like homogeneous. And now, look at this Rayleigh number. It's so many scale, it's the real turbulence. And one of the interest is inhomogeneous, it's anisotropy, everything. So it's really difficult. This is moving from convection? No, people will think, oh, this is from just boundary layer turbulence. No, this is from convection. So convection can be rigorous. Okay, and okay, so far we are talking about a lot of idealized system. And it's very difficult to pick the example from the ocean. Okay, here is some very simple, like that idea roaming around in the ocean, that this is the most simplest uh, ocean model, like which drives the thermohaline circulation. And again, there's always, if there's an idea, there is another counter idea, okay? So there's two schools of thought. One thinking, this is the model, and another thinking, no, 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 wind is driven by, hey, ocean is driven by wind only. But who knows, is maybe combination, or until unless we have to remove the wind from the old world ocean, and let's see, is driving or not, but it's difficult. <laughs> But in computer, we can do. We just remove the wind, we can remove the more wind, and we can, we can remove the buoyancy, and you can still see. So this is a lab experiment. So heating from the top and cooling from the top. So this is, we are giving heat flux at same horizontal level. In Rayleigh-Bennett case, we are giving heating from the top and cooling from the bottom. So you are giving a net heat flux. And here, there is no net heat flux. So is do you think it can give you energy to the system, and it can give you box scale circulation? Yes, it really happens. So, not as rigorous as the relevant convection, but really, I tell you, it will, it will happen. So here, as you are cooling here, so this will generate, so this is, you can think like, this is not, at, uh, this is like close to not atlantic uh, cooling zone, and this is the equator. So, and in the ocean, the, there's a no heat flux. And now, you're heating here, that means it's less buoyant. So what will happen, you're cooling here, you're creating a horizontal density gradient, and that drives a flow. <laughs> okay, no, no, I'm, I'm almost done, okay. And here, <laughs> here, one more thing. Here is Rayleigh number based on the length. And just last slide and a lot of movie, and then I'm done. <laughs> because I prepared this last slide yesterday night. It's not coming? Okay. Yes, that's the, that horizontal convection, and is now is really high Rayleigh number. And now this is a little bit different than other case. Here is heating at the bottom and cooling at the cooling and heating both are doing at the bottom surface. And if I play the movie, 
You can't say that this is the conviction. This is not like any wind state. This is the conviction. And you have really strong turbulence in the interior. And here are other cases, all are numerical simulation. This is cabling, and this is your double diffusive convection. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs>